We're analyzing Palantir Technologies, stock ticker PLTR, to see if this is a great business on sale. This analysis is around 10 minutes. It's going to be intense, but it's going to be worth it. We're using the Select 6 analysis to look at the most telling financial metrics before estimating a fair value for Palantir. Then we're giving a final rating to the business. Before we get into these valuable metrics, let's understand Palantir stock performance. Right now, Palantir trades for $15.34 per share. Year to date, Palantir has rebounded a lot. Their stock price is up 140%. They're one of the best performing stocks so far, beating the market as they rebound from their all-time lows. Palantir went public as a SPAC just under three years ago. In that time, their stock price is up 58% overall. They're compounding at 18% annually. Before their recent run-up, Palantir was down. Their stock traded for about half the price that they went public at. Palantir trades just $2 below their 52-week high. The company is up nearly three times from their 52-week low. Right now, there's a good amount of short interest in Palantir. About 7% of their shares are sold short. Palantir is a big business. They have a $32.5 billion market cap. But the burning question is, why should we be paying close attention to Palantir? Palantir, named after the Palantiri in The Lord of the Rings, is an analytical software company that focuses on leveraging data to create efficiencies in its clients' organizations. The firm serves commercial and government clients via its Foundry and Gotham platforms. The Denver, Colorado-based company was founded in 2003 by Peter Thiel, Alex Karp, and John Lonsdale. Now that we have this understanding of Palantir, let's get into the numbers. Starting with metric number one, we want their average return on capital to be above 14%. We're typically looking at this over a five-year time frame. Palantir has been public for just under three years. We do have numbers going back five years for the business, however. In all five of these years, their returns on capital have been negative, but they've been getting less negative over time. This is based off how return on capital is calculated. Their earnings are also getting less negative over this time. Even though this is showing improvement in their underlying business, the average company earns about a 7 percent return on capital with negative returns on capital here palantir is not only below our benchmark they're also below average this is an x on metric number one metric number two we're looking for growth we want to see five-year revenue net income and free cash flow growth all three of these have to be up for this to be a check we're including their numbers up until today when we calculate this growth during this time palantir has nearly quadrupled their revenues their net incomes have been negative in all five years. They're getting less negative over this time. Palantir is still heavily reinvesting back into their business. Their negative net incomes may be unfairly penalizing the business. During the same time, we can see that they've grown their gross profits over this time and their gross profit margin has actually increased. Palantir has very high gross profit margins above 70%. Even if it's a little unfair for the business, we're still counting their negative net incomes against them. At the same time, however, Palantir has grown their free cash flows. They were negative in three of these years. In their last two fiscal years, Palantir's produced positive free cash flows. Overall, that's a good sign for the business. Because their net incomes are down, this is an X on metric number two. Metric number three, we're looking from the view of an individual shareholder in Palantir. We want to see earnings per share growth in the last five years. Again, the company's earnings have been negative over this time. They're getting less negative. To not be unfair to the business, we want to look at their shares outstanding as well. Palantir went public just under three years ago. Even since going public, they've been diluting existing shareholders. Because of this shareholder dilution and their negative earnings, this is an X on metric number three for Palantir. Metric number four, we're looking for free cash flow per share growth in the last five years. As we learned earlier, Palantir has grown their free cash flows. They're positive today after being negative up until 2020. Because of this, even with their shareholder dilution, this is a check on metric number four. Recapping where we stand currently, we have one check and four X's for Palantir. During recessions, it's overly levered businesses that can have the greatest losses. In metric number five, we want Palantir's net debt, which is their total debt minus their cash and their short-term investments, to be below the sum of their free cash flows in their last five fiscal years. Throughout this time, Palantir has had negative net debt. This means the company is left over with cash after paying off their debts, which can give a healthy financial position, especially when a company generates free cash flow. Palantir ended their last year with $2.4 billion of leftover cash. Right now, they have $2.6 billion. They've generated positive cash flows in each of the last two fiscal years and in their last 12 months. When we sum up their free cash flows over this time, in the last five years, they've consumed about $50 million of free cash flow. Because they have this strong cash position, this is a check on metric number five. Palantir's also produced $346 million of free cash flow in their last 12 months. It looks like they're at a point where they're generating cash flow and they have a strong cash cushion. Palantir seems to be in a healthy financial position. 
The big metric of them all, metric number six, we want Palantir's average five-year free cash flow divided by their enterprise value to give us a yield that's above 5%. If this is the case, this gives a slight risk premium to the yield of the 10-year treasury. It's the first of two different ways we're estimating a fair value for Palantir. Right now, Palantir has a $30 billion enterprise value. This looks at Palantir similar to it being a private company. It accounts for their net debt position and their market cap. We learned Palantir consumed free cash flow in their last five fiscal years, although again, they've only been public for three years, meaning Palantir has a negative average free cash flow to enterprise value yield. On a current basis, Palantir's produced 300 46 million dollars of free cash flow in their last 12 months when that's divided by their 30 billion dollar enterprise value we get about a 1.1% current free cash flow to enterprise value yield. That's below the yield of the 10-year treasury and far below the risk premium we'd be seeking. Meaning for Palantir on metric number six, this is an X. Don't just throw the business out. We still want to estimate their fair value per share. Everything we've discussed so far is important, but there's something missing that in my opinion is the main reason to analyze Palantir, which takes us on to using a discounted cash flow model to estimate their fair value per share. A DCF model is based off the predictability of a company's free cash flows. Like any model in any discipline, its outputs are sensitive to its inputs. Palantir has a limited history as a public business, meaning this may be less accurate than it would be for some other businesses with a longer track record. Because of this, Palantir has low business predictability in their past, especially as they've been a private growing company. We're starting with an average of their free cash flows in their last three years, then growing these into the future using historical assumptions. It's up to you to figure out if these are accurate or not for Palantir. Again, this is going to be a rougher estimate than usual. Assuming Palantir grows their free cash flows at 13% annually for the next decade, then in the following decade, assuming this growth rate is cut in half and they grow at 6.5% annually, if we add in their tangible book value, which gives an estimate of their net worth, if we want a 15% rate of return, which is what Warren Buffett's looking for from his investments. At today's same valuation multiples 20 years from now, an estimate of Palantir's fair value per share is only around $3. That's down a lot from their current stock price. Keep in mind Palantir has a very limited public history, so there's not a lot to go off of with this. By having less available data, this is a rough estimate for Palantir at best. Most importantly, this analysis is not financial advice. It's not a buy or sell recommendation of any security. Consult with your financial advisor before making any investment decision. In just a minute, we'll give our final rating to Palantir, but we have to address something first. We've covered the numbers, but the qualitative factors of this business may be even more important. What are they? Well, let's find out. Starting with the factors supporting a long thesis, number one, Palantir's focus on modular sales could potentially lead to substantially more commercial clients, which the firm could subsequently upsell. Number two, with products targeting both commercial and government clients, Palantir has distributed revenues, with non-cyclical government revenue insulating the firm during lean times. Number three, Palantir has strong secular tailwinds behind its back, as the artificial intelligence and machine learning market is expected to grow rapidly due to the exponential increase in data harvested by organizations. But we'd be remiss if we didn't cover the negative aspects of Palantir as well, looking at those supporting a short thesis. Number one, Palantir's executive team has made questionable strategic decisions in the past, while past performance isn't necessarily indicative of future results, some of their missteps should be highlighted as a tale of caution for potential investors. Number two, it will likely take multiple years before Palantir will achieve gap profitability. Number three, by not selling to countries or companies that are antithetical to Palantir's mission and cultural values, the firm has self-restricted its potential growth opportunities. That's a balanced perspective of some of the qualitative factors for Palantir, now it's time to give our rating. In analyzing Palantir Technologies, stock ticker PLTR, we learn they're a growing business that's recently become cash flow positive. They also have a $2.5 billion cash cushion on their balance sheet. However, Palantir is not yet gap profitable, meaning they have negative returns on capital. They've also diluted shareholders even after going public as a SPAC. It's worth reiterating this analysis is not financial advice. Palantir does not look attractive based off its free cash flow to enterprise value yield compared to the yield of the 10-year treasury. When we performed our discounted cash flow analysis, if today's valuation multiples are the same 20 years into the future, you believe those growth assumptions and want a 15% rate of return, a rough estimate of Palantir's fair value per share is only around $3. That's down from the company's all-time lows, which they hit toward the end of 2022. Looking at all the factors of our analysis, Palantir Palantir looks like a weak candidate for further research. If you enjoyed today's video, be sure to like it, subscribe to the channel for more stock analysis videos, share your thoughts about Palantir, and let me know what business to look at next in the comments below. Thanks for learning about Palantir with me, and have a great day.